chocolate lover welcome to chocolate TV episode 139 and today I thought we'd try one chocolate a, a, a British chocolate a British chocolate you say yeah we tried some of the, uh, this brand before Montezuma Montezuma dog chocolate chili and this is even uh, more scary because this is Montezuma chocolate uh, it is an old Mexican recipe from the time when the Aztecs actually reigned the country of Mexico and Tecnoclitan, where Mexico City is situated, uh, was the capital and it lived hundreds of thousands of Aztec Indians and Montezuma was their emperor and along come Cortes and killed them all and took all the cocoa beans as well. There's a myth, there was a, about a billion cocoa beans in one of the treasure vaults. The Spanish thought they would find gold, they found cocoa instead. And this is uh, a British chocolate and they say inspired by the traditional Mexican recipe, great organic chili, it is organic, or even the chocolate, uh, and some chocolate courage. Uh, we have been making this bar since starting Montezuma in 2000 uh, two, and that is approximately what 500 years after Montezuma and the Aztec realm crumble although we have changed the way we grind the chili to improve the surprise this bar remains one of our most popular you should only be a little scared for what Montezuma's revenge I thought that was only in Mexico not in the UK but you never know. I was in Blackpool this summer and uh, the landlady at the inn that we live warned us about some of the fish and ship shops. They said, you get the terrible stomach ache if you eat there. Their hygiene is really bad. And we saw some really nasty ships in Blackpool. Sorry Blackpool. Love to be there but at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we only went to the fine restaurants not to the fish and chip shops. And as always, the old man has a difficulty with the packaging. How the... Sorry. So this is 73% cocoa and grinded chili. So it might be hot. Uh, a little afraid. Oh. Might be very hot. And I want to try it and after that I even gonna try it with a zip of red wine to see if that even spikes it further in the hotness area. Dark brown chocolate with a red tint to its color actually. Break it off and let's smell it. Smells dark brown chocolate, dry. Maybe a hint of chili as well, actually, yes. Red hot peppers. Red hot chili peppers. There's red fruit as well, in the, in the chocolate has the scent of red, red uh, not, what do you call it, red currant. A bit of acidity is, uh, lingers on the nose. As well as that dark chocolate, dry, wooden character. And a, a tiny, tiny hot note of chili pepper. So, let's try it. First off, you don't feel anything. That there's the dry and the bitterness of a cocoa, and just a quarter of an inch in, if you can measure time in inch, uh, chili kicks in. Not really hot, but medium hot maybe. And I'm not a person that eat hot food, so for me this is medium hot. 
chocolate has a nice creamy feel to it now after a, a couple of seconds. Uh, the chili somewhat overpowers the chocolate taste, but it's actually like you have the chili on the tongue and on the back of your throat, but you have the chocolate uh, on your cheeks and in your front of your mouth. Strangely enough, it separates. The chocolate has a kind of a cooling effect, but the chili has a, a warming effect on your mouth. So, it's a fire down below, ah, and it's a quite pleasant place to be in the front of my mouth. With lots of dry cocoa flavor, with a tiny hint of uh, acidity, the, those red currant I, I think I spotted on the nose. I can see why people like this chocolate, if this uh, is this brand's most popular one, I can see that. It is not overpowering hot from the pepper and it has a nice chocolate feel to it. Uh, yeah, why not? I couldn't give this, I'll, I'll give this 7 out of 10. Uh, the aftertaste, the back end is pepper, 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 pepper. And, excuse me. Here I've got a, a glass of red wine. It is a Chateau Neuf de Puff uh, from 2007. It is from Domaine de Benedetti. And we'll see. This has kind of a, a fruity nose. Uh, lots of plum and raspberry and blackberry jam. But also a, a sting of hot black pepper, white pepper. And some, as well as some dirt, herbs, and even a hint of that kind of barnyard feel that some wines have. This wine has a, a back end that is peppery, peppery, peppery. So, with a piece of chocolate that has chili, chili, pepper, chili, pepper, and a wine that has a peppery back end. Let's see, is this a good combo or not? When trying uh, chocolate with a uh, beverage, melt the chocolate in your mouth so you got the liquid, and then add the liquid and see if they actually mix. If you have the chocolate as a liquid in your mouth and you add the wine, it actually the chocolate almost works like it adding tannins, those grainy feely things in the wine. <laughs> so the wine suddenly appears a bit more dry. And strangely enough, the chili and the pepper back end of that this wine uh, kind of nulls each other out. I don't get that chili pepper heat and I don't get the peppery heat from the wine. Weird. I thought it would just explode in my throat. But it hasn't. Hmm. So for me, that's a surprising and good combo. And that's it. For episode 139, I hope you join me next week for episode 140. Bye.